Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. The news is going to get a little confusing and then hopefully you understand it as the entire picture comes together. Bitcoin slumped towards $11,000 once again as predicted on Thursday. Nope, nobody predicted that. The dive back to the drawing board occurred following Bitcoin's failure to contain the crude gains above $11,500. The reversal failed to find support at $11,400, forcing Bitcoin farther down. The price retested support at $11,100, in turn forming a double top pattern. A double top pattern is a typical textbook trading pattern used in technical analysis, analysis there we go, to signal a reversal from a downtrend. The two bottoms price highlight the strongest support, which later led a bounce upward just as the one seen in the yada, yada, yada. So uh, Bitcoin's price has been quite tumultuous over the past week, um, as have many other coins. At the moment, Bitcoin is down, I think, around two or three percent, maybe even not that from where it was yesterday when we were having this discussion of price movements. Uh, for some reason, this it was there was not a lot of news discussing uh, Bitcoin's price and where Bitcoin was going to go. For some reason, there was, however, an enormous amount of news as to where the altcoins are going to go. For the, and I didn't even have to read through the actual articles for this one. Uh, for those of you not looking at the screen, this one says after recent pullback. The next stop for Ethereum price is new all-time highs. This was said by Weiss Ratings and many other companies out there who have been analyzing Ethereum over the last couple of months. They all came to the exact same conclusion. And for those of you also not looking at the screen, it says XRP flashes buy signal at bottom of potential failing wedge pattern breakout imminent. They're all talking about the exact same thing over and over. No matter where I looked, they all had the indication that the market had reached a bottom. It was not going to go any lower. Bitcoin kept on retesting, trying to fall lower. However, it did not work. Now, the reason for Bitcoin falling in price and actually rising up and then slamming back down appears to be this, what we've been talking about for the last two days. It says, what every Bitcoiner warns against happened. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said the U.S. Monetary Authority will let inflation shoot above its 2% target to privilege the labor market. The obvious argument to make is that this is good for Bitcoin. It's a tired meme. Yes, it is. But right now, it seems to be especially appropriate. And sure enough, Bitcoin jumped 2% after his speech to 11550 Traditional markets also reacted with the S&P 500 rallying to new all-time highs. Doesn't get any weirder, while yields on longer maturity U.S. bonds also climbed as well. But while markets are still rallying on the unexpected policy shift, Bitcoin quickly lost most of its gains. Bitcoin popped up in price. I don't know if they have the chart in this actual uh, window right here, but the price popped up as this speech was happening and then completely fell exactly back down to where we were before. Bitcoin quickly lost most of its gains. A sign the news was already incorporated in the price. That's also probably not correct because the price had been going down for the last three days. So I don't think that Bitcoin going down in price was indicative of us knowing that we were probably going to get news that the U.S. is going to pass by or continue inflating their currency. The fact that the Fed can and will make the money printer go burr even faster isn't surprising to the crypto market and only deserved a knee-jerk reaction. So here's the actual Wall Street Journal article right here. Of course, this is all over the place. It says, Fed approves shift on inflation goal, ushering in longer era of lower rates. So apparently they're keeping the, um, the current um, rates uh, at 0% to 0.25%, and they're going to be passing by the goal of the 2% inflation per year. Usually they pass that anyway, so I don't know why that was even an issue. Um, but n I guess we'll see by the end of the year exactly how much money has been printed and if that's going to actually have any type of an effect on any market because it seems right now that many markets, regardless of what they are, are doing well 
even when we keep getting news that inflation is rising and that a lot of this money is just being printed to prop up markets. And if you think logically, if they had not printed that money to prop up the markets, how low would the markets be? Um, so a lot of the news came from the fact that Bitcoin went up, fell back down, even after the news of inflation rising in the strongest economy on the planet. Um, and then also the other news that didn't get a lot of attention, but I saw this in a couple of places as well. And either way, the 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 outcome is is dumb. Nicest way of saying it. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange Bitcoin futures and options market are set to mature this Friday. If I'm not mistaken. Yep, that is today. Leading some traders to fear that the most recent Bitcoin dump is a presage of weakening markets. According to a September 2019 Cointelegraph and Arcane Research report, there is typically a 2.3% drop ahead of each monthly CME expiry. Given the size of the upcoming expiry, it's worth taking a moment to evaluate new data to evaluate if these CME drops drop ghosts continue to spook the market. That's a weird sentence. The 2019 study moles deliberate manipulation as a culprit. But aside from that, it did find that 15 out of 20 months had negative returns for the last 40 hours before a CME expiry. A lot of the news really focused around the fact that apparently Bitcoin has not reacted to what the Federal Reserve said. However, it reacted to the fact that the CME is going to have their futures expire today. I honestly have no idea what to think anymore, and I, and I think no one else does as well. The idea that Bitcoin would not react, first of all, the fact that Bitcoin isn't at 12,300 US dollars right now after we have confirmation that inflation is going to continue to run rampant within the United States is also just mind-boggling. I was going to say something else, but mind-boggling is the nice term. And then the other thing being that Bitcoin has reacted negatively to that and to the CME Bitcoin futures expiring today is just the dirty cherry on top of the nasty cake because a lot of this doesn't make sense. Um, I'm not sure really where to go or to continue with this. I mean, we have no choice but to see what's going to happen. Uh, and even more so, we've had news before in the past, a lot of other times, that we typically get a price rise when futures have ended because we're no longer tied to or must fill any type of gaps and therefore Bitcoin can also move on its own, which doesn't make a lot of sense once again because these are futures traded in US dollars and that shouldn't dictate to where Bitcoin's price is going as it's Bitcoin. So... Confusing news all around. We'll see where this takes us. I guess by Sunday, if Bitcoin has moved back up or has started to begin to try to act normally on the news that all of this has happened. And apparently also, according to many different analysts and websites, um, altcoins are about to um, jump up in price and experience new all-time highs. I don't know anymore. I, and I don't think anyone else does to be... Uh, completely honest. Also, in news I couldn't get away from, I tried my best, I kept clicking around it, and this was on about 15 different websites, so I guess we'll discuss it because uh, clearly it's very popular news and people want to hear about it. The U.S. DOJ, or Department of Justice, filed a lawsuit on Thursday seeking to seize front funds from 280 accounts across a variety of cryptocurrency networks, all of which are tied to past attacks by North Korean attackers. Court documents revealed alongside a press statement showed that the government's investigation dates back to 2018 and centered on a string of attacks on cryptocurrency exchanges in South Korea. S okay, huh. The court document also mentions U.S. company based focus on Algorand blockchain, alluding to the attack on Algo Capital, an investment firm that lost $1.9 million in the assailant's DOJ press statement stated that $2.5 million was stolen. According to prosecutors, the stolen funds were laundered using a series of unnamed cryptocurrency exchanges as well as over-the-counter traders based in China. 
Today's action publicly exposes the ongoing, they said, today's action publicly exposes the ongoing connections between the North Korean cyber hacking program and a Chinese cryptocurrency money laundering network. Kind of weird. Is it just me that the US DOJ is trying to seize money that was taken from people in China and in South Korea? Okay, I'm just going to swing around that part. So, we had news about this since 2017, and I guess the investigation began in 2018 because, you know, time. Uh, so what happened was, and this is for those of you who don't know, I'm going to give you a little uh, weird history lesson about the cryptocurrency space. We had someone called the Bitcoin time traveler who had mentioned in, I don't know, 2014, 15, I don't, I don't know what time it was, uh, that apparently, here's where it gets weird, that North Korea would become one of the largest holders of Bitcoin, and people were like, well, that sounds really stupid, and then lo and behold, allegedly, they had been stealing or accumulating tons of cryptocurrencies, and they are now believed to be one of the largest holders of Bitcoin on the planet. Like I said, it was going to be a history lesson, and it was going to be weird, but he, that's that's what it is. Uh, so apparently, um, all this money was stolen across multiple channels, and now they're trying to, I assume they have blacklisted these accounts. This is exactly what we were talking about yesterday. Um, as far as um, whitelisted accounts and blacklisted accounts. If you did not see yesterday's video, I um, not—I was going to say I demand you go watch it. I, I, I ask that you watch it just so you have an understanding of exactly what's happening within the cryptocurrency space right now. Because a lot of people who are associated with these accounts, even if they had the coins before are probably going to be looked into as well, which of course just makes tons of sense. It doesn't because it just absolutely doesn't. Um, the really weird part that I kept on seeing, for those of you, I mean, there, there are multiple articles based on this as well. It says U.S. authorities go after 280 crypto accounts allegedly tied to North Korea, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is that they're trying to get these coins and a lot of people, if you not even don't read between the lines, just don't know the history of the cryptocurrency space, you would assume one would have the assumption that they are going to be uh, trying to get the cryptocurrency from these accounts in order to be able to give them back to their um, rightful owners, the people who these coins were stolen from and or hacked from. Um, however, that's not how it works. For those of you not looking at the screen... This is an article from the 3rd of February, 2020, and it says U.S. Marshals will auction off $40 million in Bitcoin this month. We've had a very long history of events that have happened within the cryptocurrency space, DOJ, uh, which we were just talking about as well, where they have seized cryptocurrencies and namely mainly bitcoin over the last couple of years for whatever reason they might have said or thrown out there in the news something illegal happened we took their bitcoin something took place we took their bitcoin something we didn't like we took their bitcoin and this is not to say that it's happening again but once again i remember years ago when we started getting this news you would assume that the coins that they took if you're able to trace it back to some type of an illegal activity through the blockchain and through the transaction outputs, you are probably able to gather information and or have other people come forward and say, hey, that was actually my coin and I can prove it with the hash or I can prove it with the transaction number that happened on my wallet. Nope, these coins are gathered, accumulated, and then auctioned off. This is an article from 2015. It says, New York Exchange ItBit says it won five blocks of U.S. Bitcoin auction. Same exact thing happened. They were conducted by the U.S. Marshal from these coins that were accumulated and then simply sold off to the highest bidder. This one says, this is an article from 2014, just to let you know exactly how long. I, I think the first one happened in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one says, Tim Draper wins 2,000 BTC. Yep, that same Tim Draper in second U.S. Marshall Bitcoin auction, 2014. Um, yep. So that's just how it actually works. I don't know if this news was popular because justice. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, but if past history 
holds true. These coins are probably just going to get auctioned off in about two years as well as they um, blacklist these accounts and take the money from these accounts. We are entering, this is, this is a precursor of what's going to happen, what is going to happen, not what may happen, what is going to happen quite frequently when we start having central bank digital currencies. When everything can be traced and tracked to you, back to your phone, back to your wallet, back to your computer, back to the maybe the chip that you have in your hand, because this is also a new trend right now with people putting their digital wallets inside of their hands. Imagine having your account blacklisted because some of the US dollars or the euro or the digital yen that you were using was in an illegal transaction that happened 15 people ago, but they can trace it to you that you are the current holder of said money and therefore your account is blacklisted. We had this information before in 2018 as well, when people sat before Congress and told them that, yep, you'll be able to do that. And they were like, okay, that sounds good. So, um, yeah, not really much more to say on that. This was destructively popular news. It was really all over the place. I don't know how to really... What is he doing there? Is it like a... a okay. That's the creepiest thing I've ever seen. He's like picking up digital evidence. If you're not looking at the screen, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's just a really weird... What is he calling in? That he found it? Okay. Uh, yeah. So all that stuff's going to be auctioned off to the highest bidder. And once again, kind of weird that they have jurisdiction in the other countries, but, you know, logic. Let's move on. Next up in you should probably just be grateful news. Growing institutional interest is helping to drive a recent spike in volume on backed, according to its president, Adam White. But the U.S. regulated crypto derivatives exchange is holding out hope its dormant options platform will eventually gain traction. Trading volumes for physically settled Bitcoin futures on backed rose to around $134 million on Tuesday from a previous high of $132 million on the 28th of July. According to crypto derivative SKU, backed when live last September, there's a beautiful chart right there. They said the market recognizes the value that a regulated, physically delivered Bitcoin futures offers for hedging and risk management and speculation. Uh, getting physical with Bitcoin, etc., etc. Moving on lower. Bop, ba, da, bop, bop, bop. Despite the success with its new Bitcoin futures, Back seems to be struggling with its options contracts. No volume or open interest has been logged since the 15th of June in Back's Bitcoin. That's that's really insane. Can you imagine having no and like you are? How do I? Gosh, how do I put this into words? Uh, does it even have his quote somewhere around here? And I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, ba, ba, da, cha, ba. I can't even find it. There's just so many words here. He said pretty much somewhere around here that he was a little annoyed uh, that they were regulated and people were choosing not to use them. He kept on using, I see if I can find the word. He kept on using the word like like overseas markets or like over the so and so markets that like didn't that that things that weren't regulated within the United States and how dare other people. Uh, here we go. We are a fully regulated, intermediated traditional futures market. Contrast that with the offshore unregulated markets that you see trading on a lot of crypto exchanges. I think he assumes because they got pat on the back by regulators that everyone's supposed to be like, oh, them, them. Yeah, I like them. Let's use them. That's not how it works. Uh, I'll, uh, and, I, and I'll tell you this right now for those of you who don't know, rich people, a lot of rich people are perfectly fine with using unregulated exchanges, especially ones that are secure and that they're able to get their money off of again. Because imagine being able to make a million dollars in a day and no one knows about it. They're totally fine with that. Um, this was also slightly popular news that um, Bact is gaining traction once again, but not as much traction as they would like. I guess it is kind of a like a mud sling in the face and that makes no sense, but you get what I'm saying. Like, they are basically owned and slash are the New York Stock Exchange and no one's really using them. I think it's, um, I think Binance often has higher volume than them, as does, it's not OKEX. There's some other exchange out there that also is doing incredibly well with their Bitcoin futures compared to backed. And that's why I said, you know, maybe just be, you know, 
grateful for what you have because at least people are using your platform. People don't have to use Backed at all. I, I probably assume, assumption, that a lot of their volume is probably coming from, I don't want to say them, maybe like other really rich friends who they have who are just simply choosing to use their platform. I don't know. Uh, Backed was seen as like a huge force in the cryptocurrency space last year, like before they were going to launch. And I think prices rose on that idea, especially because they were physically settled Bitcoin futures. And then also like even after they launched, which I think the price kind of like trended sideways during that day as well. But um, maybe people just aren't interested in actually trading in the futures. You know, it's also fascinating to me as well. And I'll tell you uh, what's been going through my head. A lot of the things that have to do with derivatives of Bitcoin, not that they're not faring well, they're just not faring as well as people assumed that that, that they kind of would. Uh, many Bitcoin ETF, ETN, ETP, uh, or uh, derivatives product futures or otherwise physical or money cash. Um, I think people are slowly starting to realize that it's, in the long term, better to actually own the Bitcoin than to simply trade a representation of it. And I mentioned that before. I said, imagine how angry all these rich people are going to be when they realize that all these funds and stuff that they're buying into aren't the actual Bitcoin, and that they're just simply giving their money to the companies and corporations who are using that money to buy up Bitcoin. Oh, boy. So um, maybe there's been a shift in the air somewhere where people are like, oh, actually, I'd rather own the entire Bitcoin and trade with that. Or let's start buying up Bitcoin and just hoarding it as opposed to, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But this is happening all across the, the, the board. You know, they're all not doing that exceptional. And it's probably because if, if you get an indication or some chart is telling you or some bank has told you or some... Uh, wealth manager has looked at 15 different charts with their people and have come to the conclusion that if you buy a Bitcoin now, this is of course all hypothetical, I don't live in the future. If you buy a Bitcoin now and 10 years in the future, it's worth a million dollars each. Well, you're probably better off buying said Bitcoin than trading back contracts back and forth uh, to make some little bit of cash. You know, th 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 These people are making a lot of money, but you get what I'm saying. It's better to hold the Bitcoin than the actual cash. Anyway, uh, yeah, just be happy. I, I, I think offshore options are going to continue to do very well. Just because it's not regulated by the U.S. doesn't mean it's garbage or that it's crap or that it's not going to do very well. On the contrary, there are 191 other countries out there who are also into Bitcoin, and they're probably not going to be regulated by the U.S., and they're probably going to continue to do very well, so... That's that news. Let's move on. Also in, I think, big news, it says money attracts money. This is true. And Barry Silbert, CEO of Digital Currency Group, knows it. His company has already established itself. I don't care, yada, yada. Today it announced a new venture that will expand its reach into a whole new frontier, the crypto mining industry. In a recently issued press release, DGC announced the creation of a new subsidiary focused on cryptocurrency mining. Foundry, a company quietly founded last year, has received $100 million. Uh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. $100 million in funding to begin operations focusing on installing or in the installation of farms across the United States. That's what I was looking for is, is, is the word United States. I knew this was in the news for some sort of reason. <clears throat> uh... Such a move might seem odd. No, not at all. Considering that the U.S. isn't exactly known for providing cheap energy, still, Digital Currency Group is confident that other factors could give Foundry a head start. This is exactly what we were talking about yesterday. A lot of people are quite worried um, that China controls an ever-increasing amount of the Bitcoin hash rate. I think the news, the number that we had yesterday from the Ripple guy was apparently 65% which is a huge jump from the 51, 52, 53% that we had in the news around 2017. If that trend continues and they continue gaining more traction, China will probably own 72% of the Bitcoin hash rate over the next three years, and then eventually we'll have news that they own 80%. You kind of see where that trend could be going. So I assume a lot of these things are happening 
right now that we just simply aren't hearing about. But usually there's always one company, always one, uh, who comes forward talking about how much money they have and how much they're going to be putting into something. It could be for the press. It could be for whatever. I'm not really sure. Maybe they're trying to get other investors. But yeah, $100 million is a huge amount of money just to start mining Bitcoin. That's absolutely insane. So once again, I assume at least five of these are probably happening right now uh, because one, they, they want to mine Bitcoin to become richer, but also at the same exact time, uh, the idea that one country already controls 65% of the hash rate is bad for the entire, uh, what's the word, uh, de de decentralization conversation that we've had before. Uh, you can't be decentralized if one country owns the majority of your computing power. So, yeah, not really much more to say here. Is this the actual uh, press release, if you will, from Business Wire? It says, DCG enters into Bitcoin mining with newest subsidiary, Foundry. Wonderful. Uh, good for them. Hope it works out for them. Uh, because I've, I've noticed, have you noticed, there's been a huge... Um, slow down in the amount of people who've come forward saying that Bitcoin is decentralized, not saying that Bitcoin is not decentralized. But you understand what I'm saying. We used to have a lot more news about that, but I assume their metrics have also picked up in the nail. Okay, well, there's one country who kind of has the majority of it, and therefore, anyway, if you get what I'm saying, you get what I'm saying. If you don't, let's move on. And to finish things off, as Ethereum network fees continue to climb, Crypto companies are looking for alternatives to bring the cost of transfers back to acceptable levels. Coinbase is the latest with an upgrade to its stablecoin, <clears throat> the USD coin. Center Consortium members Circle and Coinbase have just launched an upgraded version of their popular USDC dollar peg stablecoin going live yesterday. Okay, why not? USDC 2.0 aims to tackle high fees by allowing developers to alleg de delegate it to other wallets or take fees in USDC instead. The official announcement explained that most users here. <laughs> the official announcement explained that most users need to keep a balance of ether in their wallets to make the transactions. It added that this is unnecessarily complex. Easiest way of saying it: the complexity presents a barrier to mainstream adoption and broad usage of digital dollar stablecoins for internet payments. Uh, so apparently, they're trying to make sure that you can just use the USDC as the actual gas payment as opposed to using the gas do any of you remember in 2017 when um crypto kitties first came out and you had to like, when you were using the actual crypto kitties you had to enter the amount of gas that you were trying to send for the transaction it's just things like this are, are going to make sure that cryptocurrency never becomes hyper mainstream it has to be as easy and as seamless easy as as humanly possible people need to be able to click on something it sends as easy as sending an email or as easy as sending a text it's the same exact way when you send a text there's no gas fee there's no usd coin in the background it's just a text message it has to be as simple as that um anyway uh yeah apparently coinbase has a new um stable coin or rather an upgraded stable coin uh, uh ether ethereum really has to get it together their network is becoming hyper-clogged. It's slowing down a lot. The transaction fees are rising. It mainly has to do with DeFi. Same exact way that all of this was happening with um, ICOs. Uh, but the network won't be able to hold on for a long time. If we don't get news by November that Ethereum is definitely going to be upgrading, we're going to start to see the same shift that happened in 2017 and 2018, where a lot of projects were simply leaving Ethereum and they were moving to EOS, they were moving to Tron. I think maybe one or two of them tried to move to Cardano. I'm not really sure. Uh, the point is, you can't stay slow forever. If you want your project to take off, you're going to move to another blockchain. And this is why I think it's fascinating and interesting that we see so many companies this year have been exclusively building on Ethereum or have been moving their projects or their tether over to Amise Go and over to Ethereum. I guess they're all also betting on this upgrade happening, but if it doesn't happen, we are going to see a, another exodus and then you know how that goes. Anyway, yeah, that's the Coinbase gas news. Let's move on.
As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Snacky Chan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain Decentralized, Peter, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Graysick, Moher Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Wish the Third. <laughs> Did you hear me taking that huge breath? Richie Wish the Third, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangia Lavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skip's Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Body McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff. Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigra Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you for the, the, the kind messages from a lot of the Patreon supporters as well. I, I, I do see you commenting, and I try to leave you little hearts whenever I can, like, sift through the comments and I see what you're posting. Thank you all very, like, really very, 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 very much for your support especially during this crazy year. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. At the moment, the market's looking wild. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are currently up, but I assume we're going to have some type of a dip? Question mark? Don't know. Um, we are maintaining or have risen above the resistance levels or the levels that we are not supposed to be Falling under. I feel like I was talking about Voldemort or something like that right there. Bitcoin's currently at 11,391. Ethereum is at 387. I think the fall down number for Ethereum was like 320. We are well above that. XRP is down. It's at 26 cents. Chainlink has risen once again to the number five spot. Polkadot is down by 13.5%. I would say it was going to happen. It, it rose, what was it, threefold over the course of a week and a half or something like that. So there was bound to be some type of a pullback. I assume it'll start rising rapidly once again should Bitcoin and Ethereum start rising as well. Binance Coin is up by a smidge. Neo is also up. Sure, why not? Synthetix is also up. Sure, why not? Yearn Finance is also up. Sure, why not? Um, but the wider market is just in red. I think the market has no idea where to go. I think many people, probably myself included, assumed that there would be an immediate spike in price when we got news that the US dollar, the world's reserve currency, was going to continue to devalue itself. However, logic has not taken hold and we have um, dropped in price especially the news that we could have dropped in price because of the whole Bitcoin futures thing. I, wh what? Anyway, um, yeah, that is definitely going to do it for this video. I do hope you all enjoyed. I hope you have a great Friday. Hope it's absolutely fantastically wonderful wherever you are. Like really make sure to take care of yourself. Do something nice for yourself today. Stop reading the news. It's, it's too much. It's, it's just way too much right now. Uh, watch something funny on Netflix. Go call a friend. Sit in a park somewhere. Have a picnic. Go eat some ice cream. Go get a corn dog. I, I don't know why I said corn dog. It just sounded delicious. I think I'm really hungry. Just do something fun. Go enjoy yourself because it's just a lot to do. Um, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.